guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. So, a lot of you were questioning as if this were mine, if you guys saw my Instagram story and videos and stuff. This is actually not mine. This is my buddy Mike. He just picked this up. It's a 2024 Type R FL5. Absolutely beautiful. It's in championship white. Honestly, I think this is one of the best colors you could possibly get in this car. Me personally, I'm a big fan of this in red, but I don't think you can go wrong with championship red. Or sorry, championship white. It's got the really nice red interior with the red carpet, which they brought back in the FL5. Obviously manual. I don't, you can't even get these in automatic, obviously. But the car is beautiful. And one of the things that I loved about this over the FK8 was that it's so much more subtle in comparison. The FK8, personally, I love the front end of those, but the rear end I just was never a big fan of. So one of the great things that they did, or Honda did, was they actually listened to their enthusiasts and they toned things down. They went down to 19s instead of the giant 20s with the red uh, lip around the wheel. And personally, I, I just, I love this generation of the Civic, of the Type R. Even the normal Civics, like they always catch my eye when I'm driving around. I always look at them. I think they look fantastic. I love the headlights on pretty much all their, their lineup right now. And with the Type R, it looks absolutely incredible. So he just did pick this up. He had the FK8 before. You guys have seen it on the channel. Uh, he had the Volk TE37s on as well, the bronze ones, which looked awesome. And uh, he picked up basically the exact same car, but in the newer version. And uh, he had this over the other night. We were just kind of chatting and checking it out in the garage and everything. And it looks, I'm, I'm in love with it. Now, I know a lot of you have noticed that I am interested in this car. This is a car that I have talked about. Uh, a lot saying that it is a car that I am definitely considering in the future now personally I have never driven one I never even driven an FK8 before so I'm not really sure if it's something for me but thankfully my buddy Mike was gracious enough to bring the car over and we're gonna go for a little spin now keep in mind this car is brand new it has less than 200 miles on it so we're not gonna be ripping on it or anything it's just going to be an initial impression just kind of going over my thoughts what I think of it and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's hop in the car, go for a little cruise, and I'll let you know what I think. All right, guys, maiden voyage in the FL5. First thing I'm noticing is I'm just not a Honda person, so I haven't ever really experienced a Honda clutch before, but the throw, like the travel of the actual clutch is incredibly short. It's really nice. I mean, comparing to the STI and the M3, those clutches are like 10 miles long in comparison. This feels pretty good. This is definitely, uh, Definitely something you get used to driving every day. Right now I'm in individual mode, so I'm not even, that's not in R mode. So the suspension's in comfort, I believe. Um, oh, it has the, this, I'm finding this stuff out as I'm going. It has the, I believe it has the sound piping through the uh, speakers, right? Yep. So my, my buddy Mike is with me, so he's gonna be helping me out a little bit. What's going on? Yeah, so uh, how many miles does this have? Uh, Where's the show? 300. Oh, 311, so I said under 200 before. Now keep in mind, as I mentioned, it has 311 miles, so we're not going to be ripping on the car. So my buddy Mike, he really doesn't believe in the whole break-in procedure thing as much as other people do. But obviously this is a new car, so I'm not going to be uh, ripping it through the gears or anything. Maybe one day he'll let me uh, take it out once the car's all broken in, and then we can really kind of test it out. But so the suspension's in comfort, so this is what you would drive in kind of every day. But everything else, he has an indiv in individual, so everything else is in kind of the more aggressive tuning or more aggressive mode um, but in a little bit we'll try our mode see how tight the suspension is I heard it's really really bumpy um, almost too bumpy but even now this is in complete comfort it's still it seems a little bouncy but all right so our mistake it was in sport so it definitely was bumpy now it's in comfort a lot more comfortable so I can definitely see driving this every single day and not bouncing all over the place so I'm not sure if you saw me bouncing around on the video but for sure this is way more comfortable than the uh, sport mode it's funny i'm so used to driving lower cars so i'm looking out for the bumps and everything but this car is stock height so i can just pretty much drive over whatever <laughs> so used to the m3 and the sti being so low that i don't have to worry about it in this thing but overall it feels really nice i mean everything feels high quality the steering wheel feels nice it doesn't feel like a honda civic it feels like something special which is definitely what you would expect spending this kind of money on a I don't want to say Honda Civic because it's not but spending on a Type R you know you want something a little up a little bit extra and for sure I definitely think this is worth the money now obviously you can really see where this thing shines you know on the track and kind of putting it through its paces but going on some back roads just cruising around I mean I would not mind driving this every day 
Now, I'm a big all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive fan, if you guys haven't noticed. So, this would eh, this is not my first front-wheel drive car. My first car I've ever owned was actually a uh, Volkswagen Passat 1.8T. And uh, that was front-wheel drive. And I had a lot of fun in that, being 17, 18 years old. But um, I'm sure this is much more different. But I'm curious to see how this feels now, after I've gotten a lot more experience with other cars. And, you know how this feels front wheel drive like but taking it on turn this is a comfort now it feels good now uh let's see where'd you have it oh you put it in individual okay we'll put it in the middle train coming <laughs> <That was sad. laughs> yeah. all right so now we're back into his individual mode which is comfort i don't know we're not sure <laughs> we it's, forget what uh, i mean it's our engine Okay. R sound, uh, sport suspension, and okay. I think that's it. Okay. So it's it's pretty up there in terms of uh, the sensitivity and the aggressiveness of this mode, but for sure you can definitely tell the difference in the suspension mode. Now a lot of cars that have the different modes that you can change into, it's it's pretty minimal, but this for sure you can tell the difference between comfort and it being in the sport mode where it's a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more tight, a little bit more aggressive. So there's no question about what mode you're in. I thought, I mean, at first we thought, he thought it was in comfort, but it wasn't. So that was our mistake, but definitely a big change between the, the um, suspension changes. I would probably, probably driving in comfort for the most part, you know, when I'm just cruising around, but if I'm on some back roads and having fun, I definitely would put it in R mode or sport mode. So one thing that I really like is the shifter. It's super short. It's not a long throw, it's very precise. You feel it going into gear. I definitely think it could be improved with um, some bushings or something to be a little bit more, I guess, direct or a little bit more notchy, which I prefer. It feels good just out of Honda's factory, basically. And um, you know, I don't think most people would do anything, but for me, I always like it a little bit more notchy. Although, it's definitely more notchy than uh, some other cars I've driven in the past. So we're still in individual mode, which is all the sport comfort, or the uh, sport, modes and everything pretty much and it's honestly a comfortable ride I mean I'm sure if I drove it more and kind of got used to the kind of the aggression the bumpiness I would probably drive in this mode more often now with my m3 I always went to sport plus that's kind of the mode I just went to directly just because I always preferred that feeling same thing with my STI I always went into sport shop no matter what I, I mean that didn't change the suspension feel but just you know I want all the power I want everything possible all at once so most likely I would end up kind of doing it in R mode or individual mode, but take a little turn here. Honestly, I mean, we're only doing like 30 there. <laughs> Feels super tight, very flat, doesn't feel like there's a lot of roll, which is good. Um, I mean, I'm just kind of going back to my SDI because that's all basically what I can compare it against to, you know, four cylinder turbo kind of car. And the SDI stock, you know, there was a lot left. Uh, on the table in terms of the suspension from factory. So the turning radius of this, where's reverse? <laughs> uh, the turning radius in this thing is pretty small. Um, the SCI was pretty small, but is that because is that this is front wheel drive? Are they always like this? I don't know. This short? Um, I don't know. That was really, I had to, that was pretty short. Now, my favorite thing about cars is obviously the sound. Um, this sounds pretty decent. I mean, I definitely think it sounds better than the FK8 stock-wise, but this can definitely use an exhaust. Uh, I do, this pipes the sound in here, in here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you definitely hear a little bit more. Personally, on my M3, I turned that off because I wasn't a fan of it. Um, but I get the, you know, I get why people keep it on and everything. But I would definitely be doing an exhaust on here. I know AWE has an exhaust that people do. Uh, there's another one, Remark, that I've seen people do, which is a little bit on the quieter side. It's a newer car, so I'm sure more options will come out, you know, as this car progresses. Um, so I'm not sure what I would do in terms of the brand, but I would definitely, that's probably one of the first things I would do. Exhaust, lower it a little bit, get some T37s, front lip, and I would be done. All right, so those are my initial thoughts of the FL5 Type R. Let's um, head back to our little spot. We'll do a little bit of a walk around, and I'll give you guys my conclusion. And if it's a car that I personally would chase after and possibly get in the future. All right, guys. So there we go. There is my initial and first drive of the FL5 Type R. I absolutely loved it. Honestly, this is a car that I would highly consider. If I was in the market for something like this, to be honest, 
I wouldn't mind trading in the truck for this. I know it's kind of completely on the other end of the spectrum, this being a sedan and my truck being a truck. But obviously for a daily driver, having a Honda, getting some great gas mileage, I wouldn't mind that at all. But just a quick few styling tips that I absolutely love. One of the things that really, really drew me to this car was not only that they kind of dialed it back from the FK8, especially the rear end, but that the front fender or both fenders, the front are super wide as well as the rear, which I'm a big fan of. Obviously M3s, that's kind of one of the things that I've always loved about M3s. So having the Type R with such wide fenders is pretty awesome. The rear is super aggressive, but the front, I mean, look at that. It looks so good. And with some proper fitting wheels on here, it would look even more amazing. Again, he has the TE37 SL, same exact wheels as I have on my M3, but he has them in bronze for this car. He had it on the FK8, so he's gonna throw these on, I'm hoping. <laughs> and he also has some springs to lower it about an inch or so. So if he does that, I think this thing's gonna look pretty darn amazing. I mean, it already does to begin with. I love it in white. If I were to get one, I know red is kind of not the most popular color in this, but I absolutely love it in red. I think it looks fantastic. And you can get the carbon wing in the back, which has the kind of red weave in it, which would match really well. Yeah, the red on red is a lot, but you know, that's kind of the true Honda heritage. Having that red carpet is kind of a, a throwback. So it's really cool they did that. And um, I don't know, something about this car just really speaks to me. I know it's a Honda. I'm not a big Honda person, but I definitely wouldn't mind owning one. I don't know, maybe it's in the future. We'll pick one up, do a whole build series on this thing and enjoy it. But uh, what do you guys think? Should I get one? All right, guys. So that is going to wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all about the FL5 Type R or you are interested in me picking one up, let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.